Welcome everyone to the Genesis Project Podcast, business principles for beginners from the School of Hard Knocks. I say that success leaves clues. In this podcast, we're going to discover the clues that it leaves behind, and we're going to start at the very beginning. We'll get into the weeds of how the guests of the show came up with their business ideas, the why behind their business ideas, how they dealt with setbacks and failures, what keeps them pushing forward and the emotions behind it all. Everyone wants to start a business, but many are held back by something that keeps them from starting. We'll learn what it takes to get to the next level of business and beyond, and we're learning together through different principles of people who graduated from the School of Hard Knocks. So, grab you a pen, some paper, and a highlight to take notes, because class is in session. Hey, what's up, class? This is the Chancellor Bernard Gleaton. Now, I just want to take a quick minute just to stop by and let you guys know that you need to subscribe, rate, comment, and share so that everyone who wants to become an entrepreneur or who wants to level up as an entrepreneur can get this lesson. Also, make sure that you jump on my email list and my Facebook group for exclusive content. Come on and mix and mingle with my community with other entrepreneurs and create something great. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the classroom and see what our next lesson is with our new guest professor. I will see you guys in the classroom. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the School of Hard Knocks. I am the Chancellor Bernard Gleaton, and this is the Genesis Project Podcast, business principles for beginners from the School of Hard Knocks. Now, I put out a call to find somebody who could really speak on leadership. And needless to say, I believe I found that person. Now, this person I, that, that, that I'm going to bring into the classroom is an awesome guy. He is all about value and, you know, he'll give you the shirt off his back, man. And, and I like people like that because I always find that me and those type of people could really vibe and could really build on something bigger, better, and actually just, just do a lot of great things, man. So with that being said, uh, there's so much that that this guy could could offer you, could tell you guys, and actually, you know, there's many, many <laughs> multiple lessons that this guy could teach you. So let me go ahead and bring him into the classroom. I want you guys, I want to introduce you guys to guest professor Alex Lopez. Say what's up to the class. Hey, how's everyone doing? <laughs> Man, uh, again, I, I want to tell you, I, I appreciate you for answering that call. You know, when when I was doing my research on you, I thought that you was, you was literally the perfect picture of, you, you was literally the picture that I had in my mind when I wanted somebody to come into the class and talk about leadership, man. So with that being said, I want you to go ahead and just give a quick bio and, and tell the people a little bit about you. So one thing is I appreciate the, the picture aspect, right? I always tell people I got a face made for radio. So that's, that's my thing, right? So a uh, very simple bio, man. I come from, so I was raised in LA area in California, basically was there my whole life. And then, uh, you know, around 18 years old, so I go to the Marine Corps. I went to the Marine Corps, did some good stuff there. I uh, went through a lot of trials in, through that time. And a lot of things happened to kind of change the trajectory of my life there going forward. Got out, moved to Phoenix. Um, you know, during that time we were building a family. So I basically you know, being deployed, being, being sent out to Japan, all these places, Iraq and having a family back home. I kind of decided that I didn't want to do that forever. And I don't want to be away from my kids forever. So I got out, came to Phoenix, went in the education sphere for a little bit. Throughout that time, I started a lot of different businesses. I probably started a total of six businesses I built and sold uh, throughout my time. And then um, the biggest one, I'd have to say, which was kind of the most life changing one I started in 2011, which kind of led to a lot of other things in my life, uh, put me in another position in terms of like where we are today. So pretty much that's, that's, that's the bio, man. Hopefully that gives you what you wanted on that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does, man. It does. You know, I, we, we're definitely going to talk about this. You know, uh, first I want to say thank you for your service. Um, and, and we're, I actually got a funny story that I'm going to share with you. It does have something to do with, with my identical twin brother and him being in the air force. So, uh, I'm kind of anxious to tell you that story. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear it, man. I want to hear it. Awesome. I'll I, I tell you that. But before, before we go any deeper, man, I, I want to ask you 
um, pretty much the way I always ask, or the first question I typically ask all of my guest professors is, what is your Genesis moment? And for those of you who are brand new to the School of Hard Knocks, let me explain to you what the Genesis moment is. The Genesis moment is when you come to a fork in your road of your life and you can go right, you can go left. Don't have to be good, don't have to be bad. It's just what you can see your life being like beyond those first steps. So for example, of a Genesis moment is me starting this podcast. That's a Genesis moment. Another Genesis moment is me getting married. That's another Genesis moment. And another Genesis moment is me trying out for the CFL four years removed from high school. That is a Genesis moment. So with that being said, guest Professor Alex, I want you to tell us what is your Genesis moment? I feel like there was, there was three. So three that kind of go to, and I'll go quick on them. So my first one, I think, was when I was in second grade. Um, you know, I started a little sour licorice ring that kind of basically somebody sold me a sour licorice two for a quarter. I realized I can make a lot of money selling one for a quarter. And then we started kind of creating our whole little ring of sour licorice. I mean, that was one It showed me the true power of entrepreneurship and uh, the ability to kind of control what you want. Right. So, I mean, you control the candy supply on the court, on the, on the, uh, on the courtyard, I guess you, you got, you got everything. Um, the other part was, I think when I went in the military, so uh, we we're, you know, obviously we had some, some medical issues that happened. We were there, I had a traumatic brain injury that separated part of my brain from my spine, which caused a lot of other future problems going forward down to seizures, down to, I mean, who knows what, right. But I would say the biggest Genesis moment, the one that was the most powerful in my life was, you know, in 2011, 2012, I decided to leave corporate world, go 100%, drop into my entire future, right? So we invested, my wife and I, into a business that we built, that we enjoy, we love doing it, it followed my passion. Uh, but when I was 30, I got down with cancer and, uh, you know, not to get spiritual, but I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. You know, God kind of gave me a, a, something. He put something in my way to say, hey, you're in the wrong place. I need you to move somewhere else. And all the signs are telling me, I mean, you know, I'm a breakthrough type of person. If you give me something, we're going to break through it. We'll figure it out. And uh, it just kept happening. You know, things kept happening. I got down to cancer. Then I got down to lupus. Then I got down to rheumatoid arthritis. If you've ever wrapped cars and done like things that requires you to be in one position for a long time, you know that that, that stuff is very painful and it's not very fun. So, you know, at the same time, you know, God also sent my best friend, the guy to me that I would not say no to. I mean, just, you know, you got that. If you don't have that friend, go find one because he gets you in a whole lot of bad trouble. You get him in a lot of trouble, but you have a lot of good time. But the biggest part with it, I think what was most important was he's a person that I knew had my best interest in mind at all times. So he says, hey, I need you to come check this business out. Why don't you look at what I'm doing? Little did he know I already had, you know, being my best friend, didn't even know who was I not to share that. I already had a big passion for the financial industry. I already had passion for helping each people to train people. I helped a lot of entrepreneurs build businesses. So for me, the Genesis moment was him calling me and say, Hey, I need you to drop everything in LA, come back to Phoenix. Let's go build something. And that's kind of, that was the, the biggest turning point in my life, to be honest with you. It gave me a lot of freedoms. It basically put me in a position to start working on myself again, because corporate world, as we know, you know, they're, they're not pushing you to be bigger and better. They're, to, they're pushing you to sit in your chair, do what you're told and produce. Right. So that's kind of a big factor. So that was the biggest Genesis moment in my life. That's that's amazing, man. And that's <laughs> it, it seemed like you you could go a lot deeper into those Genesis moments. And you know, if, if we get some time, I would like to to dig into it a little deeper about those Genesis moments that you could have had even more so than than what you've told us. But uh, one of one of the first things that I want to ask you, man, you know, when 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 I did my research on you, you know, leadership kept com kept coming up. And that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted you on the show to, to, to specifically speak on leadership. So before we could really do a deep dive into leadership, I want you to tell us what is leadership to you? I mean, leadership to me is basically, you know, setting an example, being one that others want to follow, right? And how can you do that unless you're doing the things that, that need to be done? Because, you know, you can be a leader anywhere for good, for bad. You know, sometimes it's fun to be the bad leader. We go do something, go get into trouble, you know, as long as something too bad. But to me, being a leader is basically setting the example of what somebody could do if they if they apply what they have. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's also obviously the influence of others, like anything else. When people talk about, you know, being an entrepreneur, you can't be. It's very difficult to be an entrepreneur if you don't have some leadership ability, because how are you going to influence others? Right. Um, you know, it, it's funny when people say, I want to be an entrepreneur, but nobody trusts them in their life, right? When, when nobody trusts you in your life, there's probably something you did. You spent your whole life being a taker 
and never being a giver. And that's why people don't trust you. Yeah. Well, so people, you know, that's able to be broken through, but it's not, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So I mean, being a leader is, you know, setting that example that people want to follow in the Marine Corps, you know, you got two types of people. You got the guys that do it because they're rank. Oh, you'll do what I say because I'm a Sergeant. And you got the guys like, look, dude, I'm gonna go do this. If you want to sit on your butt, you can sit on your butt, but I'm going to go do this. I can really use your help and uh, I can use everybody else's help. We get this done. We go home or do what you want. I'll see you later and go do it. And then all of a sudden, boom, everybody comes up, everybody's working, everybody's pushing. I believed in doing, you know, basically setting that example. And uh, obviously when you're younger, you do a little bit different, use a little bit different choice words and whatnot. But um, I think overall being a leader to me just means giving the people the opportunity to, to follow because a lot of times people that are scared to be an entrepreneur, they don't want to do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you set a good example, like we we're talking about earlier, my social media, I don't advertise on social media about my business. I just live my life. Mm -hmm. People ask me what I do for a living, uh, you know, but I would rather talk to them about life. Mm -hmm. You know, So, I mean, that's a, the biggest part of, in leadership is just living that lifestyle that people, A, want to follow, whether it be social media following or whether it be the following of, hey, how do I come and work with you and do what you're doing? Mm hmm. Man, you know, one of the things that you mentioned uh, was the importance of, of leadership uh, as an entrepreneur. And I, I want to dig into that a, a little bit more. I want to I want to know why is it important to be a leader as an entrepreneur? Because understanding that we all cannot be like the uh, for for my sports fans out there. We all can't be a uh, Bear Grylls. Right. Well, he, he's not sports, but we all can't be like beer. Right. Uh, we all can't be uh, like the uh, the great Packers football coach. Right. Some of us is just not like that, that upfront rah rah type of type of leader. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I want you to explain why is it why is leadership so important as an entrepreneur? I think because the. It's important because, you know, clients, whatnot, they have to be able to trust you, right? Other people, other, you know, you build relationships. It's all about, you know, business, all about relationships. If you're not good at building relationships, you know, people aren't going to have the trust, right? And you think about it when you're, if you want to expand in business, how do you expand by hiring people? Mm -hmm. right? You hire people, you train people, you get them on their way, but they have to trust you. I mean, overall, you know, when you're sitting with, I did a lot of business to business work, right? So Hey, what I'm telling you right now is better for your business. You came to me because you were not accomplishing what you need to accomplish. Do you want to do it your way? Or you want to do it my way? If you do it your way, this is the problem. This is you're going to keep having what you have because you're doing what you want to do. You want to do it my way? We could try something a little fresh, see if it works, and we go forward. So I think the biggest thing is being a leader in in, uh, in entrepreneurship because I mean, building a strong mind. People don't put enough value in mental toughness when it comes to being an entrepreneur because. Mm -hmm. You know, people think, oh, well, you know, I work hard. Going and showing up to a job, in my opinion, is very simple. You show up, you clock in, whether you do what you want, you know, you go sit on the toilet for 30, 40 minutes and they, they come and get you or not. You know, that stuff to me is easy. What's hard is having to do the things that you have to do and nobody's forcing you to do it. Nobody's telling you, hey, you need to go and do this. Right. So, right. you know, being a leader is it's not only leading other people, but leading yourself. And I'm guilty of it, too. I mean, anybody, you know, they're, they're, you know. You'll sit there some days and be like, man, I did nothing the last hour to forward my bought my life. I did nothing to forward my future, nothing to forward my family's life, my business life. And, you know, most importantly is that leadership aspect is important for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't if you don't follow yourself, I mean, it sounds kind of funny, right? It's not, it's not like a dog chasing his tail. You can be a dog chasing his tail, or you can just know where you need to go, right? Yeah. So um, it's just important because it, it does everything, every aspect of your life. Right. You there's people you look up to, you respect that, you know, they have leadership, but they've never had to influence you or in a, in a business setting. But you just know that if you follow that person, something good's going to happen. That's why it's important, in my, in my opinion. Mm. You know, it, it's funny you 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 mentioned uh, what you said, because I started reading this book called The, the Miracle Morning. Right. Yep. Uh, I really was trying to find the miracle. What, what, what is it called? The Millionaire miracle morning uh -huh. but i just so happy to find a miracle morning whatever it's all good it's still a great book right uh it, it, what are the things that that was said in that book that, that really struck home with me was the idea of constantly self-improving right uh the self-development of yourself so that you will be the best version of you so mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and I would just like to, to piggyback on that to, to say that the only way you could be a good leader is if you continuously self-develop yourself, whether it's reading books or doing trainings or going to trainings and, you know, seeking out mentors and things of that nature, you know, and, and before we, we hit the record button, you, you told me who a few of your mentors was. And I don't know if you want to do any name drops, but I give you the opportunity to do some name dropping if you want. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I've been very fortunate because there's a lot of people that I follow and, and a lot of them happen to just be in my business. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Are you tired of dealing with messy spreadsheets and disorganized customer data? Well, say goodbye to the chaos and hello to ConvertKit CRM. Their platform is like a trusty sidekick for your business, helping you manage your customer relationships with ease. Plus, it's so user friendly even a clown can use it. No offense to the clowns out there. <laughs> so why wait? Try ConvertKit CRM today and watch your customer management skills go from the circus to top notch. Check it out at our resource page at genesisprojectpodcast.com forward slash resources. Well, you know, I, I've been very fortunate because there's a lot of people that I follow and, and a lot of them happen to just be in my business. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and, I, and I'll tell people, I encourage them to go look these people up to see who they are. Because, you know, you think about you have you have the, you have one mentor who's super, super famous, you know, and then you have another one who's super famous under wraps. Right. So yeah. uh, for somebody I highly follow and that I've had a chance to, to meet with and learn from was Ed Milet. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, he grew up in Diamond Bar, grew up in Covina, which is right there. Um, you know, what's crazy is I never met him until I entered this, this business the organization I'm with now. And um, it's kind of crazy because you start learning from people and you see like, imagine seeing somebody that can go up there and give a show for 40, 50,000 people and talk for an hour and a half straight. But then when he gets off the stage, he's just exhausted because he's an introvert, hundred percent introvert. <laughs> How about it's that? Funny because you, you know, I remember Ed saying when he gets off a stage, it's like he, he has a jet to fly home so he can go to sleep. You know, because it's so exhausting. I didn't really understand that until you, you know, because I'm an extroverted type of person. Yeah. Right. So, like, for me, like, I do thrive speaking, but I get exhausted because I'm more of a, I guess, even keel type of person when I talk and I present and I give information. I don't get super overly excited. I don't throw my hands like crazy. They move a lot, but, you know, it's exhausting. Right. Yeah. So, that's, that's one. And then I, and I've got, you know, I'll be honest, Jeff Levitan, one of my favorite people, he wrote a book called The Tokens. You know, uh, you know, you read that book and you kind of see where people come from. And he's a person I follow very, you know, a lot. You know, there's Paul Hart. Paul Hart just started a podcast on YouTube called The Business Athlete. Mm -hmm. To me, I mean, that's the number one. If you ever want to learn more about why you should not be in corporate America, why you should go to believe in yourself, I highly recommend his his new podcast. Mm -hmm. you know, because uh, he's probably one of the most eloquently spoken people and his, the way he delivers a message, I mean, he's taught, I, I get some time with him every, you know, obviously once a week, twice, every other week or so. So a lot of the mentors you have, you got to go seek people that are better than yourselves. You can't get yourself where you need to go because you've gotten as far as you can on your own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So another one, I mean, Greg Cap. I can drop these names all day long, you know, <laughs> all the way down to my best friend, Jason Bove. I'll, I'll drop him one. You know, he's my best friend. It's at my level, but we are complete opposites, 100%. So, you know, I, you know he doesn't mentor me in business. But he's mentored me in life and mindset because this kind of guy, he could be the world, his house could be burning down and you could be on the phone with him and be like, man, I'm so happy for what's going on in your life right now. Like, <laughs> you don't know all the blessings are coming to you because that's how some people are. And what I had to do is, you know, I was very much a person that, you know, I guess the term is wear your heart on your sleeve, right? Like people knew. I believe in being straightforward. That doesn't mean being a jerk to people, right? Yeah. Straightforward yeah. just means like for me, you know, it's I'm okay with the consequence of being who I am. If somebody doesn't like that, guess what? Maybe we shouldn't be friends, you know, but with a lot of those mentors where I've learned kind of like in the military, right? So in the military, we say, take all the best of what you see with people and leave the bad behind. And if you do that correctly, then you will be able to be better them because you're not just, you know, they can only be as good as they can be, right? Because they're, they got in the cells where they got. Yeah. Now it, it's same with politics, right? People are like, Oh, why do you only see this? I'm like, cause the bad doesn't matter. I can't control the bad, but or, you know, are you going to slap your kid down because he falls? You're going to tell him, hey, man, that was a good job you did. Let's keep working on that. And then on the back end, kind of help them. You know, if they're not walking, when a kid falls, you don't slap them in the face and be like, oh, you should have walked better when they learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. 
right? So for me, with those mentors, it's kind of learning. Like Paul Hart gave me three books to read. He's like, hey, you need to read these three books. Because in my business, you know, obviously we do products, right? We, we have financial products, but like that's a passion for me. I love learning about them. He says, you right now you need to focus on your leadership ability and getting others to, to follow and figure out how you can be that Socratic leader. So right. I'm, or they give me books to read. They're not sitting there. They're saying, hey, you need to do this. They're saying, hey, go read this book. Come back. Let's talk about it. You know, I, I didn't have that growing up. You know what I'm saying? My dad taught me how to be a hard worker. He taught me how to grind. But, you know, as far as the leadership aspect, I mean, he, he did teach me not to lie. That's one thing. I mean, my, my stepdad, he taught me. Well, he didn't tell, he ingrained in me to hate lying so bad. Because when, when my mom met him, I'll be honest. I used to, you know, kids, kids lie. Six-year-olds lie about everything. You know, well, yeah. this guy's purple. And when you're real good at it, when you don't flinch, you just talk, right? Yeah. Um, I remember every time I would tell a little lie, he would make me do something big. Like imagine pulling weeds barehanded and your hands come out all bloody. Be like, hey, well, I mean, hey, does it hurt? Like, nope. Then go pull some more because I could tell it hurts. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. he just taught me not to lie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a, that's a big one. So mentors come all over the place, right? So I think having those and seeking those out is super important, but you have to have added value, right? So mm -hmm. I'm fortunate. I love doing graphics. I love doing branding. So that's my exchange with them. Right. So I, I think if you're going to ask somebody for something, you better be prepared to give them something that they can't get from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. You know, I, let's, let's, let's speak on you being a, a former Marine. Um, I want to know how have being a Marine helped you to evolve because I, I know one of your biggest things is you're, you're always evolving. Right. And that that's actually part of your name, uh, <laughs> part of your business name or, or what have you on social media and all that type of stuff. And we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that a little bit later too, but I want to know how have being a Marine helped you to evolve? You know, crazy how that, how it starts out. Right. So my uncle came out of the Marine Corps in the eighties. He came to live with us. And I saw who this guy was. He was like buff. He was like super disciplined. And I remember being a young kid and, you know, my, my, you know, my mom and dad got divorced at a young age. So when he came to live with us, he was more of a permanent figure I had. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw this guy, you know, he'd go work. People were like, oh man, you go work at a pizza place. And all of a sudden, three weeks later, he's like an assistant manager. Then six months later, he's a general manager. And then all of a sudden, a year later, he's a regional manager. Like it is, he said, it doesn't matter what you do. You just keep attacking it. Right. And um, he made me a bet in probably 1989. He says, hey, if you go to the Marine Corps, I will pay you $1,000. He goes, of all my nephews, you're the only one that I think that will get through. And I'm like five or six. I'm like, what are you talking about, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'll give you $1,000 the day you graduate boot camp. And, um, you know, there's a whole different story, which we talk about another time. I joined the Army on accident first. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk about getting ourselves in some spots, right? Yeah. So, you know, I joined the Army. Uh, you know, I went to the Marine Corps, went through boot camp. It's funny because he was writing me. He goes, hey. You know, I didn't forget that promise. I will be there on your graduation date and I will be there with, with a thousand bucks. Right. And to me, I was like, man, like I, I literally, I was telling my buddy that, that slept in the, he slept in the, the bunk next to me. I was like, you know what, man, he did so much for my life and how much I learned. I learned persistency. I learned how to push when you had it, when you were in pain, when you think it's kind of like David Goggins talks about, right? Like, yeah, you think you've given too much. You've only given 40%. Yeah. Yeah. You know, imagine. So I, I did the crucible. Um, you know, which is the re well, yeah, I did the Reaper in, 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 uh, San Diego with two stress fractured ankles. Probably. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend it to anybody. I don't recommend that, that to me. You know, when you're, when you're 18, 19 years old, you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm the biggest man, but no, it hurts later. I promise you. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, my uncle showed up and it's funny. I kept telling him, I told my buddy, I said, Hey, I'm going to give him the money back. Like he did more for my life than I can ever stress out, but I'm not going to lie, man. He put that thousand bucks in my pocket and I was like about to give it back and I went right in my pocket. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> you know, but kind of, kind of being a Marine, man, because, you know, like I, I respect every branch. We talk trash to each other like there's no tomorrow. Right. And I tell people, people are like, man, why are you guys so disrespectful? But it's, it's like a brotherly love thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I respect every single branch. But why did the Marine Corps give me a lot, help me evolve? Because it showed me to go further than I ever had before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, one thing I learned is if you're hiking, you just, as long as you keep putting one foot forward every single time, you're going to keep going. That's the same thing in business. If you keep, if you're like, man, like I remember I walked into work one day, power was out my, which surged my, my, um, which surged my server, which then at that point meant like I had, I had four drives. I had two running and luckily they were mirrored. 
So not only did I spend 2000 bucks on a new server that day, I had to hire an electrician to basically, you know, come and fix everything. And you look, it's like, well, I got to fix this and just line it all up. What are all the problems that are happening today that we need to go by one by one? And that's what the Marine Corps taught me because when you're in boot camp, everything's training day one, training day two, training 18, training day 32. You know, and as long as you line those things up and you start taking care of them, you're going to basically be in a position to where you know that, A, worse things have happened in your life. And that's the biggest factor is thinking about, man, you know, I remember little, I remember we started the crucible in, in, uh, I think it was February. I can't remember, but it was, it was totally wet. It was freezing. We we're all freezing. Like, and I'm like, man, like, I don't even like the cold, you know, so I'm yeah. up here, man, you think about it. And then all of a sudden here you are 50, 60 hours later and you're just walking through knee deep puddles, not even caring. So it kind of taught me that like tomorrow will come. You know, what's, what's happening now will pass. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. And, and I'll be honest with you. And, you know, one thing I fight a lot of things, that's why a tattoo right here says no worst enemy. I don't know if you can read it because we are our own worst enemy, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the only thing that can defeat you is your mind. You know, you can persist past other people telling you you're going to quit in business. You can persist past family telling you it's not going to work. You can persist past everything, but you can't, you can't go past your own mind. So if there's a position there, you're going to be in a spot to where, you know, you're literally going to defeat yourself or move forward. So I, I think that's the biggest way to help me evolve to just kind of build that mental toughness. And I'm not going to lie. I always make a joke that every couple of years they should let you go back to boot camp to a lose a bunch of weight. And then we also work on that discipline again, because I think that, you know, as we, if we don't practice discipline, we tend to get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the fact that I love everything that you said, man. I don't think anything you said was was wrong. I completely agree 100%. You know, coming from a athletic background, right, I, I was able to to learn early that the only way I'm going to be better is if I set this goal, and even if it's a, a humongous goal, it, like I mentioned earlier, you know, a Goliath yeah. of a goal, right, if, if I just keep putting that foot in front of the other, everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? It may take a little longer, but at the end of the day, what really matters is how close am I to, to achieving this goal or did I achieve this goal? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and when are, <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. Uh, in football, I play receiver and quarterback. And one of my favorite receivers for me to study was uh, Michael Irvin. Okay. Michael Irvin was not the biggest receiver, and he wasn't the fastest receiver. But when that ball was up in the air, it it, it could be God checking him. <laughs> He's coming down with the ball, right? Yeah. He, he just had this dogmatic attitude when it came to attacking whatever was in front of him, right? Um, and, and another thing that, that made him so great in my eyes was how he wasn't the fastest, but he ran great routes, which created separation between him and whoever was checking him, right? So mm -hmm. I, I used to study that mindset and I incorporated it into my own game and, you know, <laughs> sort of made some gumbo. I took a little bit of his, I took a little bit of Jerry Rice, took a mm -hmm. little EO, you know, a little Lance Swan, and I put myself in it. I mixed it all together and made me a better player because of the things that I watched them do. And because I watched them do it, I started doing it. And I started putting my own stuff into it. You know what I mean? And was it easy? Of course not. You know, nobody wants to go across the – as a receiver – Nobody wants to go across the middle and yeah. run into those linebackers. You know what I mean? But in my mind, all that I could think about was, do I really want to get hit? No. But do my team need this first down? Yeah. So I'm going to do what I need to do to get that first down for my team. I'll take the hit, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The What's most important to me is my team getting that first down. That's yeah. all that matters to me. And I'll take the hit. Is the hit going to hurt? Yeah, of course it will. But I'm not thinking about – the pain. I'm thinking about this first now. <laughs> this is the most important thing, so I need to attack that now. You know what I mean? And, and, and from that, I want to. I want to kind of go off into ask you about this saying that 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 we talked about that I seen a little earlier. I, I want you to tell me a little bit about it. And let me let me let me say what the saying is for, for the classroom, and then I give you an opportunity for you to explain exactly what you mean by this. I would entertain a skeptic but I would not deal with a cynic. I want you to talk about that. So the big thing is by nature, we're taught to be skeptical. 
right? Yeah. It's, it's not the fifties and sixties where somebody tells you they're selling you something, they're selling you exactly what they're telling you, right? Um, you know, and now in the days is so many people come into the business fear that you got to be careful who you trust, right? So somebody says, Hey, just show me, show me. I'll believe everything you tell me. Right. And, and even with my clients, I don't expect my clients to just take my word for it. I show them illustrations. I show them data. I show them information. I show them how clients have used their stuff. I show them client testimonials, right? Which is fine. But if you deal with somebody's like, doesn't matter what you say, I'm not going to change my mind. Then why the hell do I want to talk to you? <laughs> makes zero sense. You know, it's kind of like, yeah. It's kind of like, okay, it's kind of like the dating days, right? If a girl says, well, I don't like Hispanics. Well, you have a great life. I'm not going to change your mind. You know, I'm going to go, guess what? I'm going to find somebody who's like, I love Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? I love them. Right. You know, um, that's a, a big part of it because in business, I think that people, especially when you're new in business, right? My business, I will tell you, it's one of the hardest ones because it's so big. And every, you know, it's a 70, $67 trillion industry, right? And a lot of times we all start, you know, when I started every business of mine, you know who my clients were? Everybody I knew. When I started my first clothing line at 15 years old, everybody around me, literally, we were using clothing, paint, and stencils, you know? And I, I think it looked pretty, everybody's like, man, that's a cool, it looks vintage. I'm like, yeah, it's very vintage, right? <laughs> so, you know, they didn't know that we we're using, you know, a, a, br a foam brush and, and some some paint. Right. Um, but in, in every business, people say, oh, well, you know, people tell me all the time, well, I don't want to talk to my friends and family. Why? You know, do you have do you have a bad do you have a bad uh, reputation with your friends and family that they wouldn't at least listen to what you have to say? You mm -hmm. know, and a lot of times it's like you know I've literally taken people who are like, look, Alex, I don't trust many people. I'm not saying that I won't, but I've been doing what I've been doing for 40 years and it's working. If you can show me why I should go with what you're telling me, I will do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that client, I'll be honest with you, we looked at her stuff. I said, hey, you know what? You're right. You've been doing. Your advisor has been doing very well. You should thank him and let him know. Say, hey, another advisor, you know, pointed out all the things you did good. Because you think about this, even even to the day, right? I'm a firm believer that if somebody sells a product and <clears throat> he did due diligence, he did everything to sell that product. He more, you know, he, he uh, dotted his eyes, crossed his T's, made your experience amazing. I, I it could be my brother. I'm not going to go tell my brother, hey, you need to get rid of that product. Come by mine. It was mm -hmm. the same price. It's like, that's not fair to that sales guy that, that put his heart into it and did the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, because it's so difficult. Well, now, let's say my brother's like, well, if I already got it, why should I buy it from you? That now creates doubt in his mind. Like, did this guy not sell it to me right? So, I, I think with, you know, it's entrepreneurs. That goes for entrepreneurs. It goes for clients. It goes for kids. It goes as, as, as you know, as us being kids or our parents, right? If you automatically go into life thinking that somebody's going to say it's a lie, you're going to be very miserable and you're probably not going to have a lot of friends. <laughs> You know, that's huge. Yeah. And yeah. You think about that aspect because, you know, people don't know what they don't know and it's okay. So if somebody just says, hey, I'm not sure, I don't know, uh, show me different. I love to show me different, right? Because that's a challenge. Like, hey, dude, if you can show me what I need to know, I'll do what you want to do. Right. So that's why it's important, you know, in business, especially like, like I told you before, I don't care what business you have. I don't care if I've seen it before from somebody else. But, you know, if I respect you with a little bit of respect, I'll give you 30 minutes of my time. Mm -hmm. Everybody, mm -hmm. because usually maybe it's not for me, right? But what if it's for my friend Johnny? Like, hey, you know, he, he was talking about that. You know, maybe you connect with him. You know, my, my tax person that like literally gets every person from me, I get probably two to three text messages a day. Hey, can you send me your tax person? Can you send me your tax person? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the fact is people know I vet people out, Right. And I listened to how she could help me in my business and how that applies to other businesses. And that's down to, that's down to, I don't know, protein shakes and, and vitamins. You know, I'll listen to people. It may not be what I want, but what if I know if she's like, Hey, I specifically want something that looks like this or tastes like this. You know, uh, for example, I had a friend that wanted to come to my industry. And I was like, Hey man, you know, this probably isn't for you just in talking to you, but why don't you go talk to this guy over here that does this? Mm-hmm. You know, my, a buddy of mine, he's, uh, I can't, I'm not going to say what company, but he's the lead hiring man and hiring director for a company. And he sends people all the time. He's like, look, what we do is not for you, but you need to call my friend Alex. I think you go into his industry, you might like it, and you guys mesh very well. I've created those relationships with people because I show them why they should not, why they don't need to be skeptical with me. And we can have that relationship. Like I said, business is 100% relationships. Closing, what people call closing, it's all about listening and providing. Right. That's why people that are skeptical just want to see. They want to, they just want to earn that trust, right? Because trust is everything. Right. People that right. are cynic, they've been, I always tell people, if you're cynic and you've been hurt, you got to let that go. 
you know, that, that heartbreak you got in sixth grade, that's not my problem. You know, so we can move on and we can do something big and great together, you know, or people come into my business and, you know, we are not an employee business. We're an entrepreneur business. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know, like, you know, starting a business, you can go months without getting paid. People come to me and be like, well, what's the starting pay? I'm like, look, dude, the door's right there. There's no starting pay here. If you want that, if you don't want to work hard, because you think about it, right? I witnessed my best friend who, you know, in corporate America, he was, he was doing great. He was making, you know, 85000 a year, five years in our business, grinding and pushing, just cracked, you know, just cracked 250 on his way to 500. That's not mm -hmm. something he could do in corporate America because they're going to hold you down. But that's why when people go to be an entrepreneur, they're very cynical in some cases, and that's why they stay in corporate America. That's why, I mean, if you want all the words, I will tell you, Paul Hart's podcast, that, that is the one. It's on, he talks about entrepreneur versus business owner, right? Mm -hmm. Talks about, you know, job stands for jail operating as a business. You know, if you think about it, it's very true, right? So it is. You know, that's why being cynical makes zero sense to me in life. Why do you automatically some think what somebody's gonna say is wrong? It's kind of like your dad, right? When you ask you, like, "Hey, why did you do that?" He automatically does not care what you have to say. He's gonna slap you across your face either way. <laughs> you know, why, why? Why? Hey, if he, you know, but you know, one thing I learned about, you know, from 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 my stepdad, I mean, he's, he's one of the greatest guys that I know, man, and. It's like you got to listen, and I had to learn that. That's why I learned in the Marine Corps too. You see two types of leaders, right? You see one that just yells automatically, and you see one that listens and observes, and then he responds. Do you want to be reactive or do you want to be proactive? So to me, that's why, that's why skeptics are okay, cynics are not. Are you tired of drowning in a sea of receipts and invoices? Well, it's QuickBooks to the rescue. Their accounting software is like a life raft for small business owners. It helps you stay organized, track your finances, and helps you make smart business decisions. Plus, it's so easy to use, even a sloth can learn it. Not that we're calling you slow, but you know, sloths are notoriously chill. <laughs> so why wait? Give QuickBooks a try and start selling smoothly through the world of business. Check it out at our resource page at Genesis Project Podcast dot com forward slash resources mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know <laughs> uh what are, it, it was so okay let me, let me just put this out there I, I told you earlier that that i'm from uh i'm from detroit right um and, and detroit is, is pretty much known to be you know a, a blue collar you know working class mm -hmm. uh city you know uh, we, we had our, our share of gangsters. We had our share of hustlers. We pretty much had our share of just about everything. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I would say that the, that the Detroit state of mind is more so of, you know, that the hustler mentality, you know, okay, you, you just trying to get over on me or I'm trying to get over on you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had this, this goal from last year that I, I'm still, you know, on the path of, of hitting. And I'm actually making this a every year ago that I set for myself. But the goal that I set for myself is to be more vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And that, I will admit, it does create a lot of opportunity for me to give out too much information, <laughs> right? Yep. But I find that by me being vulnerable to people, that they're willing and open to be vulnerable back to me, right? Mm -hmm. So where I might have been a, a cynic previously by me just, just choosing to be vulnerable with whoever and whatever, right? Yeah, it, it helped me to, to change my perspective on, on a lot of things in, in life and, and all that type of good stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my wife hates it when, when, <laughs> when I, I tell too much information, you know, like I, I might say something crazy like, uh, you know, I, well, I, I don't want to put us completely out on blast, but <laughs> needless to say, some of the things I, I, I say, you know, it, she don't she don't necessarily like the fact that I put that information out there. But again, you know, it allowed me to be vulnerable, and I was I was afraid to be that vulnerable because me being vulnerable means okay, somebody's going to take this vulnerability and use it against me, or talk about me, or you know, spread bad news or or whatever, right? Yep. And it did the complete opposite, you know, mm -hmm. 
And for me, that was that was eye opening. That that literally changed my life in, in many ways. In many ways. So, uh, and, and speaking of that, I know you have a you you wanted me to to bring up a, a nonprofit called You Matter Not Alone. It's suicide awareness. I, I want you to go ahead and, and speak on that a little bit. So I've uh, obviously going to war, you, you see some things, right? So whether, you know, it's crazy, you see people that go to war and they just do admin work, but the heightened sense of, imagine being on adrenaline rush for six, seven, eight, nine months, right? Sometimes longer. And a lot of guys come home and, you know, you're taught, the one thing in the Marine Corps, you know, you got two types of people in the Marine Corps. Oh, they, they want to be rough and tough. I tell people all the time, be like, hey, man, I'm just a teddy bear. Let's, let's hug. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't let's know. Hug it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love hugging people, man. I love hugging everybody, right? I hug strangers with coronavirus. They get kind of freaked out about it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, but you know, I think the the biggest part with um, with all that overall is, um, I mean, I guess overall, I don't know. Ask me that question one more time, a different way. So, <laughs> I, 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 I just want you to talk about about your nonprofit, you know? Okay, so it's not my nonprofit. So it's, so Donna. You know, I reached out to Donna um, and I said, hey, you know, because we're friends on Facebook. I, I, you know, I don't even know how we got connected, but I said, hey, um, I really like what you're doing or what you're releasing. I just want to, you know, I like to tell people when they're doing things great, even if they're a perfect stranger. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, hey, I really like what you're doing. If you ever need me to share something for you, you please let me know. And we just, she said, hey, why don't you come and work with us a little bit, see how you can help. And uh, to me, I thought that was the greatest thing ever. I said, hey, I like doing graphics. I like doing clothing design. I don't do it as a profession anymore, but I do it on my off time because uh, you know i enjoy it mm -hmm. so the reason i feel like you know um you know the nonprofit is very important is because they're trying to raise money you know they're working on a, and here's the thing is this is one drop i'll give if anybody does want to you know invest in something that will get you know it's not gonna give you a financial return back but it will give you the return they're creating a battle buddy program for you know app on your phone for veterans you mm -hmm. know where if you need somebody you can just shoot out you it's kind of like a bat signal right and who's available to talk to you doesn't it can be very anonymous 100 percent because i think at the end of the day you know people get scared and they might have that one little bit i mean i'm, I'm honest with you guys myself you know you call somebody they don't answer and you got a little bit of strength to call that one person and they didn't answer now what so in a lot of cases i tell people all the time you know there was uh, something i posted the other day it said i'd rather hear your story than read about it at your funeral or hear about it at your funeral mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of the biggest aspect that you know, I believe that, you know, mental health is super important. My wife's a therapist. Living with a therapist is not easy, guys. I'll tell you right now. So, um, you know, it's always, oh, well, you're this. I'm like, whoa, you know. Um, but it's funny because when my wife told me she wanted to be, be a therapist, I'm like, man, you don't even got to go to school. Like, you've been living with me this whole time. Yeah. Like, you know, you already learned everything. But I think, you know, with, with that stuff, as a business owner as well, think about think about this aspect, right? Having, you know, mental difficulties and then going into the business world is very difficult because a lot of times you feel alone. A lot of times you're like, man, like nobody understands. Well, believe me, people understand, right? They understand. They're just not telling everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I think mental health and that's why I think that, you know, the, the you matter is so important because at the end of the day, like everybody just needs somebody, whether they're a vet or not. I tell people all the time, reach out to me, whether you're a vet, whether you're not a vet, well, I don't care what you are. Mm -hmm. Reach out to me and, and, and just say, hey, man, I'm not feeling myself today. You know, I'm not a therapist, right? And my, and some, of my, some of my responses may be, may be a little bit of uh, a therapist nightmare. I'm always like, you can't say that to people. I'm like, well, it worked. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, with, uh, with You Matter Not Alone, uh, I think a big part of it is, you know, I love what Donna's trying to do and what she is doing. And, I, you know, she's a veteran herself. It's a lot of vets working together. And um, overall, I think we understand, you know, well, we not we might not have went to school for it. We may not have stuff happened. But think about this, man. I mean, when I was in, when I was overseas, when I, when I had boots on ground in Iraq, you think about, you hear about people like just find out their wife cheating on them. You found out their, their mama died. You yeah. found out their dog died. You found out their best friend, you know, isn't really their best friend talking trash about everyone else. Because you kind of talked about, right, with where you're from. Like, I, I grew up in, you know, outskirts of L.A., Right. But, you know, for me, it's kind of like people say, oh, well, this person said this about you. I'm more wondering why he was so comfortable telling you that, you know, <laughs> and saying himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a different conversation. Right. Yeah. But I think with uh, with the nonprofit, the reason I want to get awareness out of the nonprofit, because they're doing some good things, some big things. And, you know, budget is what really kills nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Right. 
You know, if they can get a little bit of help here, a little bit of help there, that's why we're looking for companies that want to sponsor that app to get it out there because, I mean, you don't know whose life you're going to save. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of my dreams, the nonprofit that I want to start later, basically I want to do a nonprofit for homeless vets. And one of my dreams, it's funny people say it's a dream, is I want to have like a shower trailer and just have a you know, big old truck in front of it, just hauls around, have the shower trailer, just drive around town, set up shop, get, you know, three, 400 pizzas, say, hey, if you're homeless, come here. Come get a shower. Come get a fresh set of clothes. We'll wash your clothes. If your clothes aren't good, we'll give you a whole new set of clothes just so you have two sets. Go sit down. Go eat some pizza and just, you know, I mean, whether people are, you know, whether they have, a, whether we have a pastor that are preach people that need it or whatnot, or whether it's just they want to talk to other people. But mm -hmm. that's one of my dreams to be able to have um, Potter's Lane. If you if you look that up in L.A., that's my dream. They created literally a a community of homeless vets, and I believe if you put communities like that in bad communities. You know, they, they watch their grounds, right? Like they literally, you think, you think like, you know, gangbangers watch the block. You never seen a bunch of vets out there kind of wondering like who's coming down my block, right? Yeah. Kind of like the Gran Torino situation, right? Um, I believe that, you know, because they need hope, you know? So it goes all the way from, from good mental health and realizing that they're, they're not alone, right? That's why a lot of people do that. They take their own life, right? And that's what we would say, well, I never knew. Of course you didn't know because they were serious about it. They didn't want to bother you more. But I always tell people, bother me, bother me all you want, you know, shoot me a message, do something, go get a pet, go do, I mean, you hear dogs all over my house, man, we got dogs, we got another one on the way, um, you know, I think they're very important, but yeah, the nonprofit, if anybody wants to follow it, I mean, look it up, it's You Matter, Not Alone, I think they need a lot more uh, publicity, I think they need a lot more help, and um, yeah, man, that to me, it's near, near and dear in my heart, because I've lost a lot of friends uh, due to taking their own life. And, um, it's, it's a very sad thing because you think about it. One of my friends took his own life, had a you know 13 year old son. Uh, another friend of mine had a 14 year old son and, um, you just don't know what's going through somebody's head. And, you know, sometimes we think like, Hey man, you know, tomorrow may not shine, but you know, as long as you have that one person, that's why vets go work, go good together because they know what they've been through and you can read it sometimes, but not everybody's that fortunate. Not everybody's that fortunate to be okay. Being, you talk about being vulnerable, right? Yeah is difficult because in the Marine Corps, you think about this, right? So why, you know, and this might make people mad, but in the Marine Corps, you know, before they used to have a, you know, don't ask, don't tell policy. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with, you know, how people feel. Whoever people want to love, I don't care. It doesn't bother me one bit, right? But the reason that they say in uniform, you hold a specific type of demeanor because when you go to war, they want military, whether it's a soldier, whether it's a sailor, whether it's a Marine, they want the other side to fear us, Right. So it's not about, it's not about, you know, to me, it's not about like, oh, you shouldn't love this person, that person. I don't really care what people want to do, right? You know, it's more of like, hey, you need to be, you know, you need to present yourself this way. You don't just put your business out there right when you meet somebody every time, right? Um, so I think that, you know, a lot of the stuff is misappropriated in the way people think why things are the way they are. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, little things you don't understand, but in, in the Marine Corps, why do they want a tight shave or a real clean shave? Because when you put a gas mask on, you can't get a good seal without a good shave. <laughs> <laughs> not know that. That, I'm like that makes perfect sense yeah well, it does you know but there's that's what I okay so you said what the Marine Corps taught me that in life there's always some kind of there's always some kind of benefit so Greg Cap, I love we call him Papa Cap, right we call him Papa he's, he's everybody's grandfather he says with every adversary brings a benefit if you look for it mm -hmm. you know with every teaching brings a benefit if you look for it so that's kind of it man that's why the the nonprofit's so important to me and uh, sorry it took a little bit longer we're anticipating on that but uh I think it's important for people, man, because because mental health in business, you know, mental toughness. That's why you got to, you know, that's why you got to read the books. That's why you got to look at it. I mean, people don't understand. Like, I read a book that's called "How Full Is Your Bucket." Number one book. Every person, I don't care who they are, they yeah. should read that book. You can go to thriftbooks.com. That's where I get it. Maybe they'll start sending me free books. I don't know, but I heard about that book. I, I heard that book was awesome. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome because you think about it, right? So, are you a person that takes from people's bucket, or are you consistently filling people's bucket? You know, I would call people with my problems, man, today's just a bad day. Like this happened, that happened. And I'm literally, li literally pulling water out of somebody's bucket. Now they go home to their family, something happens and boom, they explode on their kid all because this jerk off took all the, all their, all their, all their fluid at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. So you gotta mm -hmm. be careful. That's why when I, when I have to let loose on something, I make sure like, Hey man, so what's going on in your life? Like you heard me, what's going on with you? Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to remember that. And in business, that's important. That's why the relationships are important in business. Because at the end of the day, like you have to listen to what people mean in a lot of cases, not listen to what they're saying to you. 
Yeah, you you know, uh, so there, there, there's, there's been a, a series of, of things that, that kind of led me uh, into therapy, right? Uh, in, my, in my first season, uh, literally, like probably like my first episode of, of the Genesis Project podcast, I've, I've had my pastor come on to the show. And, you know, me and this guy, before he became my pastor, we was great friends, you know, mm -hmm. still are, right? Uh, if he if he called me today and say hey I need you to help me out with this I'm I'm there right uh, he he one day reminded me about uh, there's there's a passage in the Bible that pretty much goes something to the effect of you know why you think you you're going through something there's other people out here who's going through the same thing that you're going through you know what I'm saying uh, and that's not exactly what it says but yeah you 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 pretty much your page, man. It's, it's whatever it says you want to say right yes exactly. Uh, so once he once he reminded me of that, I, it made me sit down and think like, hmm, I, I can't be the only one feeling like this. I can't be the only one thinking like this. And and then you know my wife, you know, suggested to me that I should go to therapy, right? Um, and, and then in therapy, turn to find, come to find out, well, my one of my good buddies is a therapist, and completely forgot about it, right? Mm -hmm. Go sign up for, for therapy, went and found me a therapist, and walk into the office, and here it is, it's him. <laughs> right? So it's like, oh man, I don't, you know, I don't even have to tell you my whole life story because you already know. You already know. <laughs> so so that that was awesome, right? And, and he's also been a, a guest professor on, on the show as well, you know. Um, and, and you know, that 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 was one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I have a episode every season about uh, mental health. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and at this point in my life, I understand the importance of mental health. You know what I mean? One, as an entrepreneur. Two, just as a person. And three, not not that this has anything to do with race, but, you know, just mental health as a black man. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's rough, man. I mean, you, you think about, like, so – I have a really good friend of mine, right? And this guy's probably one of the most intelligent people I ever met, you know, and I remember, so we were talking, this is back when, you know, Obama was, was going for his first, uh, his first run. His dad called him and, you know, he's probably one of the most educated black men I ever met. Right. But he's the most, edu one of the most educated men I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Right. And he kind of talks about that. He's like, dude, like we were talking, he grew up in Oakland. You know, he's like, he would always tell people, they'd be like, oh, man, it's kind of scary. He's like, you don't know what it's like being black in Oakland. <laughs> you know? no, and I hear you, man. I mean, it, here's kind of the biggest thing is, right, is, um, you know, with that, it's rough, it's rough, right? But you're right. I mean, everything is different. So I remember the conversation he had with his dad. He told me that, you know, his dad was like, oh, who are you voting for? He's like, well, I'm not sure yet. He's like, well, you should be voting for this person because you're black. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, but like, I don't know what he's about yet. Like, let me do my, maybe I will vote for him. Let me do my research. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, I, and I hear you on that, man. I mean, then, but that, you know, we also, while we remember who we are, we can't forget where we came from or what, what we came from. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Oh, so that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I alluded to it earlier that, that I was going to tell you a story that I have about my, about my twin brother. And him I've, been waiting and too. I've, I've been waiting. I thought, I thought you're going to keep teasing me all day about it. No, nah, man, you know, I had to build it up. <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course. So, um, my brother, he, he, my identical twin brother, he served time in is, the Air is he Force. Same height as you, too? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm 6'5 and there's two of me. That's yeah. Crazy, right? So, yeah. But. So, he, so he, uh, served in the Air Force, right? Uh, and once he came out of, out of boot camp, he, he had, a. I, I thought it was a, a pretty awesome job. He he did the uh, the honor guard for the whole Air Force, not just the base, but for the whole yeah. Air Force, right? And that allowed him to to get in front of like some really awesome people, some really dope people, four yeah. star generals, uh, you know, foreign dignitaries, you know, mm -hmm. presidents and, and vice presidents, and, you know, uh, uh, the the the. Uh, disabled veterans and you know uh, prisoners of war you know all, all that type of good stuff right and he has this one picture of him doing his job and behind him was uh the first lady well i guess the michelle obama and jill biden mm -hmm. right 
which at that time was Obama's run for president, right? Yeah. Obama was in the president's office. And he, he posted that. And, man, I was like, wow, that is awesome. Did you know that, that there was behind you? He was like, I, I was focused on doing my job. I didn't want to screw up, you know? I didn't even see the camera when, when they took the picture. So when he, when he posted it on social media, I was going around telling people, like, yeah, see right there? That's me. That's me right there. Oh, buddy, man. <laughs> I got some some other stories, but I can't tell you on air. <laughs> yeah, and, you know it, it's it's been it's literally been a pleasure to meet you, man. I mean, you know, I feel like we could be friends for life. Yeah. You know? yeah. So so when I was in Japan, I had a friend. He was six foot seven. He was six foot seven Greek guy. <laughs> and I will tell you, man, how cool people could be. These calls Conan the Penguin, man, the worst thing ever, man. It was oh, terrible. Man. So you know, it's so funny because I'm because I'm like five seven ish, and I really stress that ish, right? Yeah, you know, one day you get me, I might be five seven, I might not. But uh, go ahead, patch your stats, man. Patch your stats. <laughs> yeah, so you know, but um, it's funny, man. So it's like that. I always remember that dude. But uh, it's it's kind of crazy having your brother being your same height as you, though. It's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I guess you could also say that that's where my competitive nature came from too, because uh, twins is is naturally competitive. You know, yeah. go figure, right? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. man, you know, one, one, one of the things I, I really want to ask you is about duplicating leadership, right? I mean, we, you know, one of my favorite movies is, is Rocky. You know, I, I love Rocky. There's, there's so many uh, uh, things that I could pull from that movie. And, and, you know, it wasn't that Rocky was the the smartest guy, but he, he definitely showed some type of leadership and everybody want to be like Rocky or for example, Forrest Gump, you know, Forrest Gump was, was a simple man, but mm -hmm. did amazing things. Right. How can leadership be duplicated? You know, that's in my business. Duplication is everything. Yeah. So my business duplicating is everything. And I think that, you know, there's some things that we do, that is so much that is so much us right but you have to find a place to where you can show somebody because here's the biggest thing about business right is people don't go into business because they think i couldn't do that yeah right yeah. And, but if you show them so in, in in our business so me and my best friend a few other people we work with we've been really focusing on our business how to show people that we are duplicatable right the me used to not be duplicatable and, and i loved being you know i wasn't a, i wasn't a team player i wrestled in high school why because i had to worry about nobody myself right mm -hmm. and, you know i was always a sale the sales person versus you know leading teams because i only had to worry about myself i think duplicating leadership is done by just basically bringing it down to a level to where you're not putting so much of your own self into it to where you're following like um john maxwell books i mean that's how you you want to learn to duplicate books start reading john maxwell i'll tell you that Everything I literally have probably 27, 30 books of John Maxwell on my shelf that I have to get through. Mm -hmm. And it talks about it because there's things that we identify. And here's the cool thing is when you're reading that book, you look at your best friend, you look at your mom, your dad, your brother, you know, somebody you work with, and you're like, man, this person has these traits. But what mm -hmm. you're also gonna do is be like, man, this person really sucks at that, like you said in this book, you know. Because you know, duplicating means not being so good to where nobody else can catch what you're doing. You know, you've got to basically get to a, per, a person to a level and then they've got to develop beyond that level. Mm -hmm. right? Got to give them the basic skills, right? The, I think it's 25 irrefutable laws of leadership, right? Reading that book's important. So I think a lot of it is just educating ourselves and getting, because I'll tell you right now, man, I, I'm nowhere near the father I want to be. I'm nowhere near the husband I want to be. I'm nowhere near the friend I want to be. Nowhere near the entrepreneur that I want to be or that I think I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. but like. If we go to perfection, what happens at perfect, you know, perfection is only a mass when we die, right? Because there's no more, right? There's no more fill for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think a big part of duplication is learning from leaders and being okay with that. You know, you know, um, the biggest problem and the biggest enemy is our ego. And it took mm -hmm. me probably, I mean, I'm 37 now. It took me 36 and a half years to shed that ego because every once in a while it still comes out, right? It's a shield, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a shield. The ego is a shield and it's meant to protect us from being hurt. Mm -hmm. the problem is, it's not meant for you to drive around with that thing on the front of your car all day long. You know, it's only made for those mass moments to where, you know, it's fight or flight kind of situation. Um, you know, and another thing too, is we, we have to start to, sorry, I got a 
my, my great Dane wants to get up in here right now. <laughs> uh, you know, so I think a lot of it too is, you know, um, something I actually heard this weekend is we misunderstand our emotions, right? So you think about like, you know, when we get scared, our palms get sweaty, our hands shake a little bit, our blood starts to run a little faster, our heart rate starts to go a little more, we start to sweat a little bit. But then the same exact thing happens when we get excited. Mm -hmm. So are we, are we taking a fear or are we taking the excitement? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like I said earlier is, you know, what, you know, we've been hurt so much in our life. Sometimes we just go into the position of pulling back in the shell versus like really looking toward that excitement and harnessing that excitement. And leadership is just excitement that's, that's projected in my opinion. Mm. Mm. There, there was definitely a few things that, that you said that, that hit home with me. It reminded me of, of a book that I literally just got finished reading called Atomic Habits, right? I, I, you uh, know what's funny is I, I have that on order too. Oh, so somebody awesome. just recommended that last week to me. Awesome book, man. You, 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 you going, you going to get into it. What, it this, this is going to be a tangent off to a, another, <laughs> to another topic. But uh, uh, literally, what, what changed my life about that book was how you view goals and how you should view goals. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not. Well, he said instead of you looking at it as a purpose goal, look at it as a identity. So if you take um, two people who's trying to stop smoking, right? You ask one guy, hey, do you want a cigarette? One guy's going to say, hey, I'm trying to quit smoking, right? The other guy's just going to say, I'm not a smoker. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's him putting an identity on that goal, right? But that's, that's, that's the love. I've, I've digressed. <laughs> that's yeah. not where I was going with that. Um, but in the book, The uh, Atomic Habits, what are the things that, that he spoke on was being uh, – that completely threw me off. I forgot where I was going with that. So I get all the time, man. It's okay. I get, <laughs> you, know, time, man. Uh, you know, it's so it's crazy. One one name I'm gonna drop to. I think everybody in the world should listen to. Um, he's got a podcast. He's got two podcasts. He's got. He's on Instagram. It's at under uh, Greg underscore Cap K A P P. Um, you know, it, it's life changing, man. So I mean, you know, he talks about. He has a podcast called Set for Life. Another one called Confidence. Right. And he talks about, you know, divine in the Bible, he says, you know, a divine man lives to 120. You know, so he tells himself every day and he's 70 years old. What's crazy is I'm sorry, my uncle, if he hears this, my uncle's 59 and Greg's 70 and my uncle looks like he's older than Greg. <laughs> yeah, you know, because and it's, and it's crazy, you know, and, and the thing about it is the way he talks and the things we tell each other. So this is this is one thing that I give to everybody, you know. If you talk, if I talk to you the way you talk to yourself, would we be friends? <laughs> oh, that's deep. That, that oh, hurts. That's right? deep. I mean, yeah, and that's, that's a big part of it, man. That's that's why, like, whenever it's funny because I invite people to join my business, not just can be a, be a financial professional, but literally, I believe it changed their life because it changed my entire life because yeah. the people I have access to and the things that I hear, right? So, Ed Milet, one of the most powerful things too, and why leadership's important. So Ed Milet said this, man, and I was, I was literally in tears and I was, and it wasn't because it was so profound that, you know, I'm like, man, my, my eyes are open. It was like, am I doing this? He says that, you know, your entire life, right? Your kids will love you your entire life. They will, they will love you to death. You know, if you're, if you're a good parent, but at one point in their life, they're going to have to determine whether they're proud of you or not. Are you living your life in a way to where your kids, when you die is like, man, I'm proud of everything that I did, you know, and they're not, you know, they're not going to say, oh, he worked long hours. They're not going to say he bought me this, you know, and that's a big part of it. And, you know, when we look at those things, it's like, man, like at the end of the day, like I said, man, I've got a lot of battles. I fight myself every single day. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll live with a therapist, <laughs> a little baby, very difficult. Right. Uh, and I love her to death, man. And, you know, I mean, she's, she's been there. She's been my number, my number one since day one. So it's like, I went through war. She was there for me. I went through boot camp. She was there for me. I went through cancer. She was there for me. Mm -hmm. think about it and that's why sometimes i think we forget you know when we let ourselves get down we let you know when we let ourselves get down we just think about all the people that are watching us and that mm -hmm. goes in leadership as well because the problem is we think leadership is just at the work or the people that follow us but leadership is how you live your life every single day yeah and the yeah. thing like you said the identity the atomic habits is how what the things that we tell ourselves what are you telling yourself every day yeah yeah you know, that's a bit what are you feeding up here because, you know, it's funny. I always make a joke. Like for me, like I tell people, I'm very simple. Like 
you don't talk about three kids, right? You don't talk about my integrity. You don't talk about my wife. You don't talk about my kids. Everything else, I know I'm not fit. I'm okay with that, right? You know, I, I know how tall I am. There's no, there's no mistaking, right? Yeah. And I look at it, and then, and then it's like, but then I get asked, like, what are you telling yourself, right? Why, you know, why was I able to be fit at one point in my life and not another? Because at that time, I told myself, I will be fit. I will do this. And now I'm like, hey, I'm okay where I'm at. So it's what we tell ourselves every day. That's why that question is, you know, if I talk to you the way you spoke to yourself, would we be friends? Would you allow me to be in your life? Mm. If the answer is no, maybe we stop changing how we're talking to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that you saying that reminded me of what I was going to say earlier. <laughs> from I was the book. hoping so. I was hoping so. <laughs> so, uh, I've heard this concept all my life, but the way it was explained to me in the book, uh, Atomic Habits, ha has really shined a light on a lot of things for, for me personally. Um, and that's just improving yourself 1% a day, right? And if you just improve on what you did yesterday, today, by 1%, over a course of time, compound interest will kick in and it will skyrocket, right? Yep. And so so along with everything that you just said, right? That that that's that's how I'm trying to duplicate leadership to any and everybody around me. And hopefully even on this show, right? If I improved one percent from from the previous uh season, right? Mm -hmm. If I just keep making improvements, small incremental improvements that would just equal out to, to 1%, then let's say, and not, not, say, not, not putting a number on this or a time frame on this, but let's say in five years, then this podcast will skyrocket. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, when when um, uh, the, name forget, the name escapes me, the coach from uh, L.A., he he was a LA Lakers coach back when Magic was around. He he said he came up with a plan to help his players to improve one percent. And he just said, Hey, I just need you to improve one percent. You know, mm -hmm. and he worked out a whole uh uh like literally a whole schedule as to how they could do this. You know what I mean? He took yeah. the, the the number of minutes that they play versus um you know, um, the number of minutes that they play, the points, rebounds, assists, whatever else like that. But he also gave bonus points to the little stuff. You know, did you fight for the ball? Did you save a ball from going out of bounds? You know, mm -hmm. did you did you pass up the the you know a three pointer to to give it to a guy who was streaking down the down the lane? You know, what I'm saying and those little points right there, he is what he measured to show. Okay. This, this is your baseline number, right? But with these added bonuses, this is what your points could be like, right? So this is how we can measure if you are moving in that 1%, right? So this year, this is what you did. This year, this is what it looks like you're going to do. But with these added points, you're going to be beyond that. You know what I'm saying? And that's how he measured how his players was going to be able to, to perform or just get better 1%. You know what I mean? And, and that right there, literally, I'm not going to say it changed the game, but it definitely opened up my eyes into as to, okay, how can I quantify improving myself 1% mm -hmm. every day? You know what I'm saying? And, and that led me to, to meticulously keep a track of the things that I do, you know, uh, throughout the day. Uh, meticulously keep a track of, you know, Maybe not meticulous, but but just being more 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 conscious, more aware of you know what am I saying to myself? You know what I mean? And I've always been into you know order your books and you know self development and things of that nature. But now I'm seeing because of me doing this for years. Now I'm seeing the compound interest of me constantly you know listening to self help or self development and doing everything you know in in that sense. You know what I mean? So. For me, that's how I hope that I could duplicate the leadership. You know what I mean? Are you tired of being bogged down by HR tasks? 
but it was gusto to the rescue. Their HR software is like a superhero for small business owners. It helps you manage payroll, benefits, and HR compliance with ease. Plus, it's so simple to use, even a penguin can figure it out. Not that penguins are known for their business savvy, but you know, they are pretty smart birds. <laughs> so why wait? Give Gusto a try and watch your HR tasks melt away like ice cream on a hot summer day. Check it out at our resource page at genesisprojectpodcast.com forward slash resources. Yeah, and I think a big thing too is the affirm affirmations are huge, right? Like what do you what are you ingraining in your brain? Because you know your your subconscious doesn't know the difference. Right. Your subconscious no. And the the one that I like a lot is, hey, I'm better today than I was yesterday, and I'll be even better tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll yeah. be honest, the days that I don't say that, guess what? I go backwards. Yeah. You have to remind yourself, no matter what, because think about it, what if you had a phenomenal day yesterday? What if yesterday was the highlight of your life? Wait, well, hey, today will be better than it was yesterday. You know, um, so Paul Hart, his voicemail says, Hey, uh, you know, you know, you've reached me on the best day of my life. Unfortunately, I can't come to the phone right now. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I think with a lot of it, man, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff is, you know, um, people just need to get around the right people. And if they get around the right people, their mind will be filled with the right things. Cause you know, you see how it goes, right? I mean, you think about, you know, you got friends that they change, right? People tell me all the time from when I quit corporate America, like, man, you're different. I'm like, thanks. It's a, it's a great thing, right? Perspective, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, you, you think about it. It's, it's like I said, you know, the self development and whatnot. I've come a long way now. Am I? Do I feel like I'm at even thirty percent of what I can be? No. Yeah. You know, um, you know I've, I'm very fortunate, right? I, but it's funny because now I have a team of people that follow me and you know that that listen to me and come to me. And, and it's a matter of like them. They, they the reason they stick by me is because it's not just business. Like you know, I want to know their life. I want to know what's going on because if you go into business with me. It's not just about, hey, we're going to go sell a product. So, hey, let's, mm -hmm. go, let's go make a difference. Let's go influence people. Let's go change. And let's change ourselves to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know you, you, you sort of have a, a hard stop time. And we kind of went over more than, than I, I thought we would. But let me, let, me, let me get through these last few questions. Sure. And I'll I can let you be on your way. <laughs> let's do the rapid fire on it. Let's do it. All right. Awesome sauce. All right. So. What was, what's the one thing that you wish you knew before you became an entrepreneur? Uh, save your money. Ooh, ooh. Now that's that's funny you say that because you are in the financial uh, business. So, uh, okay, let's let's go ahead and do a deep dive on that. Why? So whatever you think you need, double it. Because you can't, you know, you can only test like so. My wife and I dumped about $120,000 of our own money into a business, you know, and then when I got sick, now this is, and this is why I tell people I want to build a legacy for my kids and my family, right? So, so me, you know, I have two master's degrees. People think, oh, you're highly educated. That just proves I can go to school and do a paper. I will, let yeah. me, let me say this, education, a college degree proves, and now you're me, okay, disclaimer, if you have to be a doctor, you have to go to school, an attorney, a therapist, you have to go to school for those things, right? But to be an entrepreneur, you don't have to go to school. You know, I mean, so you think about it, it's like the one thing I wish I knew is there's going to be hard days. There's going to be hard weeks. But if you save your money and you're smart about it, because I'll be honest with you, like people always laugh because they, they talk about how extra I am because I don't just buy the, I don't buy like the base model. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to have everything, all the extra features, all the benefits, you know, I enjoy that stuff. So I think the biggest thing I tell people when becoming an entrepreneur is save your money. And, you know, because when you think it's the hardest times, the hardest times will come. And there's going to be harder times. Mm. And the only way to get through them is money, right? So when I got cancer, I did everything. Imagine, so one of the products I sell protects people through health and sickness, right? So we protect income, we protect life, and we protect health. Mm -hmm. Three things, right? So if you think about it, if I would have learned a lot more, there's a product specifically that I work on with, with people that are entrepreneurs that basically if I would have gotten cancer and I would have been covered the way I would have, the way I should have, because I sat there, I said, hey, how could I have done better? You know, that that product would have paid me seven to $9,000 a month. It wouldn't have changed my life, but it would have kept one of my one or two of my employees employed. It would have kept, you know, less stress. Because when you're going through cancer, guess what the worst thing is? It's stress. Right? Yeah. Cancer feeds on it. So I think the thing I wish I knew is, you know, save your money and be prepared. Mm, okay. Okay. How do you find 
balance between you running your business and your home life? I work from home for one. Okay. I don't have an office anymore. I close my office because here's the problem is, right? When we, when we have an office, we go to the office to go to work. But if you have nothing to do and you burn three, four, five hours, guess what you have? You got burned three, four, five hours. You're going to drive home and then drive back to the office. Mm -hmm. you know, Zoom and COVID was the number one thing that happened for the, the finance industry. I've literally seen more people in my business become millionaires that I know personally because they work. They took the opportunity. So I think the biggest thing is finding the balance is, you know, if I got to cancel the appointment, I'm going to hang out with my kids. Mm -hmm. and the cool thing about my business is I don't run my family around the business. I run the business around my family. Mm -hmm. my, son, my son every day goes jujitsu and I love it. I love taking jujitsu. Sorry, man. So we got the great day and I just realized the other dog that he's bothering. Hold on real quick. Let me, let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's up with that dude. He like, cause we have another dog keeps chasing him around the house, but I think finding balance is, is being purposeful, right? Being intentional in what you're doing. And mm -hmm. I still sometimes, you know, sometimes I slip and my wife's like, man, like, what did you do for the family today? And I'm like, that's a good question. Let's go do something for the family right now. You know, um, yeah. I think we get caught up because I mean, especially early in business, right? When I, when I was working at the marketing company, so I had a company that I, that I owned for five years, I literally would be at the office. You know, I remember one week I went in on Monday at 5 AM and I next morning at 5:45 went home, took a shower, took a nap, went back to work. I did that for a week straight, worked 120 hours, and I was dead by the end of the weekend. I couldn't do anything with my kids. Mm -hmm. So then I started just taking them to work with me. So that way when I need a break, hey, let's go do this. Let's go ride the skateboard. Let's go do something. You know what I'm saying? So I think finding balance is determining what that actually means. A lot of people don't even know what it means to find balance. Mm -hmm. You know, do I still find it? No, because if I did, i put fitness more into my life, right? I mean, I could do that if I choose to. I literally choose what I want to do all day long. Yeah. So I think finding the balance is determining the things that are important to you and basically from there, just build it into your schedule. As long as you have it in a schedule, like I tell people, apparently I was supposed to go to dinner with somebody last night. I didn't get a meeting reminder. So guess where I didn't show up to? Dinner. Yeah. You know, I, I live my life by the calendar, you know, and that's, that's how you do it is you got to literally schedule in your family time. You got to schedule in your dinner and your lunch with your wife. You got to schedule in, you know, tickle time with the kids. You got to schedule in, you know, driving to jitsu and, and whatnot. Like you got to schedule it all in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What was the biggest mistake you made as an entrepreneur? Believing I made it too soon. Ooh, yeah. you know, we, we, we can't skip past that. Yeah. We cannot skip past that. So come on, let's, 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 let's unpack that. Uh, you know, it's like, okay. So let's say you have a big month, right? Like, uh, you know, one thing people, people laugh because I, I used to pride myself on not working that hard and making good money. Right. You know, they didn't see that. They didn't see what the working hard was to me. When I think working hard, I don't think about working the mind, I think about physically, right? I'm not a physical worker. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be outside doing stuff. I respect a lot of people that do that, but A, I got, I got lupus too, so I can't be in the sun that much anyway. Yeah. But, um, I think it's, th is, it's thinking you made it, right? Because the thing is when you're an entrepreneur, you're employed every day you wake up. You're unemployed every day you wake up. So every day you got to go to work, you got to build something. That's why leadership goes into it because I see my best friend, you know, he did everything he was supposed to. And I tell people in business, if you're the guy that has to know everything before you do anything and you won't make a decision until you know everything, you're going to always be left behind. You know, he's the guy, my best friend, Jason, he's the guy that you tell him what to do. He trusts and respects you. He's going to do it. He's not going to ask you why, because he very much believes that the end will happen based on what you're telling him to do. Mm -hmm. So the biggest mistake was me. It's like, Oh, well I'm here. I don't have to work as hard. When I went from being an entrepreneur, when I quit my job again, my biggest mistake was I was living the entrepreneur after five, six years of owning a business and making it operate at day one. You can't use your past experiences. How you good, how you did good in business, it's kind of like sports, right? So like I had a guy I went to high school with, he was number one in high school in, in every sport, literally on the wall in the gym, his name was on every sport for MVP. <laughs> he went to go to play for USC and sat on the bench for a year and a half, for a year straight. You know, so I think just cause you made it somewhere doesn't mean, doesn't mean you stop working. You can't just show up in the new club and all of a sudden think, oh, well, what I did before, because what you did before doesn't matter today. Mm -hmm. The work that I did yesterday has no difference on what's going to happen today and moving forward. Just like today will not matter for tomorrow unless you're planting the right seeds and doing the right thing. Mm. Okay. Okay. I, I, I do want to, I do want to add on to that, but, sure. um, so again, because of my athletic background, right, I've learned that. You might be good in your neighborhood, 
but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good in the city, right? And then yeah. You might be good in the city, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good in the state, right? Yeah. And you might be good at the state, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good in the whole U.S. because you still got 51, you know, other states that you're competing against, right? Yeah. So, you know, from, from, from the, if you look at from, from the bottom up, you know what I mean? It, it looks like, oh, man, I'm never going to be able to get to, to this level. But if you look at it from, from the top down, it's like, wow, I haven't even reached the pinnacle yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm saying that because, you know, when, when I have playing sports, right, mm -hmm. I, I was one of those people who was, who was one of the best in the city and one of the best in the region and turned out to be one of the best in the state, right? But it wasn't until, you know, and, and like I said, I, I didn't get the opportunity to try out for, for college to play any sports in college because I ain't staying in college long enough to try out. However, when I went and tried out for the CFL, you know, that's when that hit me. Like, man, I, I might have been the best in my state, but I'm also competing against, you know, guys who was the best in their states, you know, who was the best in, in their college. You know what I mean? And, and maybe not the best in the college, but they was right underneath the best. So, you know, you, you look at it and you, you, you were like, where do I line up? Where do I rank? Right? So, that's 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 what I wanted to add on to that, you know. It's like that. For me, my mindset is like that every single day. There's somebody out here trying to take my spot, and I'm not gonna let that happen. If you're gonna take my spot, then you know you better kill me dead. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I'm gonna do my best to, to to not let anybody take my spot. You know what I mean? And just being confident in that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like in the, in the military, right? So. You know, guys come, they think, you know, the Marine Corps is kind of, it's one of the toughest branches to be in, not just because of what they make you do, but because of people that come there, right? So so you got people in business, right? So when, when I left, when, when I was in the Marine Corps, I didn't go to the Marine Corps to become somebody. I wasn't searching who I was, right? And when I came into this business here, I was really successful in corporate America. I didn't come here to see, to, to figure out who I was. I came here to push myself and build a future for my family. Right. And that's the biggest problem that we were into. I mean, you have guys in Marine Corps be like, you know, yeah, you, it's like, oh, I was the baddest kid in high school. You also said you graduated with nine people, you know, like you know, look, look yeah. over there. You know, you say you said that, you know, you were you were like the number one guy, but you were also like not very strong. So, yeah. I mean, right, man, the biggest thing is there's always somebody bigger, better and stronger. Right. Until there isn't. Um, but that's why we work towards it. That's why we you know, that's why I work so hard. And we look at, hey, like, I'm, you know, I'm a fouled human. Right. But I can be better. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this this next question, we we, we kind of already talked about this before I hit the record button. So if you want to bring this up, cool. If you don't, if you want to bring something else up, I'm fine with that, too. So uh, I want to know what is something personal that you want the class to know about you that cannot be found on Google or Wikipedia? <sighs> Man, that's a that's a good question. I mean, uh, one, one thing, man, and I'll say, and it kind of goes back to everything is one thing about me is, you know, we're all still learning to be who we are and we're all still learning to be comfortable with who we are. You know, a lot of times we put on this shield, we put in this Iron Man suit, you know, and what I'm learning through, what I'm focused on is being more of myself, right? Because you think about, we, we've grown to have a very private life in a lot of cases. You know, a lot of places, if you, if you grew up in a place where you didn't want people to know where you live because something could happen, you know, that, that, that pain extends into life. Mm -hmm. So I think the one biggest thing is to, to just know that, Hey, we're all working no matter how good somebody is, you know, we're working to be better, but lucky for me, my whole life isn't on Google or Wikipedia yet. So, uh, you know, I think the best things are to come to be quite honest with you, Okay, but, oh, man, I think, I think the biggest thing is just know that anybody, if, if somebody will reach out to me and like, Hey man, you know, I want to know this. I want to know that. I'll definitely help people out. I love educating people. I mean, my biggest thing is I love educating people on finances. I love showing them a different way. You know, literally, I sat with one of my neighbors last night who financially, he would be like a dream. And he's like, I'm not there yet. I'm not where I need to be. I'm like, hey, well, let's show you some other things and modify this. Let's show you some things. You know, um, I like teaching. I like teaching. And people ask me, you know, why, why I teach. So I teach closing classes, right? I teach people how to close clients. And they're like, you know, you know, they're like, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be sales in my business, right? You're not a salesperson. You come here as a salesperson, I will strip every bit of salesperson from you that I can before we go out and we go help somebody. Mm -hmm. 
because at the end of the day, like I told you before, like I don't live, I don't live like the broadcasting my business. I don't sit there drinking a smoothie and with it, with it, with it, you know, with, it, with a label out. I just live my life, man. And every once in a while, I'll post things like, here's the thing is I slip, right? I posted something political, you know, two weeks ago, two people I respect said, man, you were doing real good with the platform until now. <laughs> and I was like, you know, cause here's the thing is right. So, so here's the thing is right. I'm a patriot. At the end of the day, I'm a patriot. It's not about the president. It's not about this. It's about me believing that our government doesn't have our best interests in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a scary thought, mm -hmm. right? I was like, man, we spent so much time on this impeachment, but yet we got all these people, you know, looking for $200 or a $2,000 stimulus package that could really use it by now. Mm -hmm. How many neighbors you see in your community that, you know, lost their homes because of all this? You know, I believe if they spent more time worrying about us and not worrying how to fatten their pockets, We'd be holding over. So that's the other part about me people will know because I'm very big on not speaking politics anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the reason I don't speak politics, and people think, oh, you voted for this person, you I won't even tell them. You know, because to me, it doesn't really matter. My beliefs are my beliefs, right? And I don't ever want my beliefs to stop somebody from reaching out and saying, Oh, well, hey, I need your help, but he won't help me because he believes this. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, like I told you before, the don't ask, don't tell policy in the military, right? Like for me, very simple. I'm openly about it. I don't care who somebody wants to love. You know, I believe, hey, okay, what's your favorite ice cream? Uh, see, I, I have a couple, man. Superman, cookies and cream, strawberry, you know. <laughs> Pick I one. like strawberry. It doesn't make, it doesn't make either of us right. <laughs> Preference does not make you right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm very big on that aspect, and, and I think that that's, that's what I think people would – if they looked that you cannot put what I believe in a jar and say, this is who Alex is mm -hmm. because I look at it from a different world because, you know, I want to, you know, when my kids are growing up, man, people ask me questions like, you know, I grew up when I was younger, you know, I grew up very, very Christian. This is wrong. This is right. You know? And as I grew up, I'm like, man, like who says what's really right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do I, is it regardless? Is it my job to judge anybody else for what the decisions they make? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess the one thing that can be found is I can't, I can't be, I can't be categorized in one thing because I mean, you talk about one thing. I love racing cars. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't be like, Oh, I don't know. Somebody was like, I wouldn't see you as that type of person. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? Right. Right. You know? So I think, man, that's, that's, that's a very difficult to question and answer right now. Maybe, we, maybe in five years we, we, we visit that again and see, see what's there. Okay. Okay, I thought you was going to talk about your your love of of gardening and hydroponics, but what do you want? You just told me that. I mean, that's you know, what's funny is so so. Okay, this is one thing. So one thing that I found with COVID and all that kind of stuff and health, um, one thing I do love is I fell in love with hydroponic, you know, gardening. Right. So I got these things. Um, so the web, I'm going to show you where I get them from. The, so I I go to I got a friend of mine, Troy. He owns a place called TrueGarden.com. I think it's TrueGardenAZ.com, right? So they're vertical towers, and you put, you know, you you put the you put the seedlings in the pod, and you just grow. And one of the things is that the reason I fall in love with that so much is because when you kill something, you just replant it. All right, when something dies off, you just replant it. And then what's even cooler is when you start eating stuff off that thing, and you're like, man, like it's just it's just crazy. Like I was able to harbor this because you know you think about it, right? We're raising kids, but I don't know about you. My kids raise themselves. I ain't gonna lie. Like my kids are super independent. People laugh because like I have a friend of mine. Melissa, she was like, man, when I, when I, like, she met my kids, she goes, I thought your son was like 17. <laughs> I was like, why? She's like, cause the way you talk to him, you talk to him like he's an adult. I'm like, how else are you going to talk to him? Like, right. you know, I'm like, oh, she's like, I don't know. You're just like, like you call him like, bro. Like you just, you know, like you're like, Hey, come here. Like, let's go do this, you know? But yeah. So my, my love for my love for that. And the reason is because, um, my wife said she noticed when I started spending time looking at this stuff. I mean, I have literally 99 plants growing in eight square feet, 99 plants. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my love right now. And, and you know, it's cool because like I said, it, you know, it, it's forgiving because if you make a mistake, you can start over mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's mm -hmm. huge. Applies to business. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's very important. I think it's important for people to, to see the cycle of life and, and my kids see it too. It's super cool. You know, um, you know, seeing seeing stuff like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I do. I do love, you know, hydroponic gardening quite a bit. You you know you, not that we know each other, you 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 might have uh, 
you're probably going to turn me on to that. And I can't wait to, to learn a little bit more about that from you. <laughs> hey, here's the thing is, it's ultra affordable. I'll tell you right now. It's oh. super cool. Like, you know, a lot of people think that it's not. I mean, like I said, if you call True Garden AZ, I think I'm, I'm going to check my phone real quick, make sure the website. But the reason is there's a distributor that sells them, but I get them directly from Troy because he has a love. So he's a pharmacist by trade, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he owns a pharmacy, but he loves the fact that food is so important to be used as a tool, right? So that's why I tell people, even though you can buy these from other people, I recommend buying them from him because the knowledge you're going to get from them, there's just no way you're going to get it anywhere else, right? So the website, yeah, truegarden.com, very simple. Um, you know, I mean, to me, I own two towers. I'm probably going to get another one. Now it's, now it's cooling down and not too cool. Probably going to get like three or four more. Uh, my dream is to have a greenhouse. You know what I'm saying? With like 30, he has 500 of these things. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so last question I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. is, what is the one takeaway that you want the class to leave with this lesson with? The biggest takeaway I would say is, A, one, believe, believe in what you're capable of, even if you don't know what that is. So, you know, like I said, I referenced David Goggins earlier, right? When you think you push, you only, you only probably did about 40%. So the, the one takeaway I will say that's most important is keep your eyes and ears open. Mm. Here, if you have a friend that's in an entrepreneur that's trying to do something and try and make something happen, be that support. It costs you zero dollars to jump on a Zoom and listen to somebody what they're trying to do, right? So... Luckily, I said, you know, the Lord sent my best friend a person. I wouldn't question it. That changed my life. It put me in the business, in the industry. I'm never going to leave. I never have to go out to. I don't have a plan B. You know, when you decide what you want to do, you literally, and this is very, um, this is not original, right? You got to literally burn the boats and not look back when you decide, like, this is where it's at. Now, be smart. Save your money, right? Protect your, you know, protect your family. You know, don't put your family at risk. But when you decide to make that decision, you got to not have a plan B because a plan B means you intend to fail. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Uh, I, I just, I just wrote a, a blog post about uh, that in one of my previous episodes. And I'm not sure if I, if I got it from my brother when he was talking to one of the POWs or if I read it in a book, I, I know I got it from somewhere, but uh, the story goes, the way I understand it, the story goes that uh, a general was leading his men in the battle they washed up upon shore and he turned around and gave the order to burn the boats. And he turned and looked at his troops and said, hey, either we're going to win or we're going to die trying. There is no plan B. And fortunately, you know, they, they took that to heart and they marched forward and they, they won. You know, um, <laughs> that, that has always been one of my favorite stories because, you know, you either all in or you're not, you know, that's the biggest thing, man. You gotta, you gotta make a decision. Cause a lot of people, you know, people talk about, this is one other thing too, is people always tell me like, Oh, I'm all about multiple streams. I'm like, but you don't even have one. We got to get one going first. The problem is Instagram has created this life of, Oh, side hustle, this side hustle, that I'm like, look, you, you don't need a side hustle. You just hustling. Right. So that's yeah. when I do graphics. I do most of my graphics for my friends. I don't only do it for my friends. I do it for free because a, what I believe my time is worth, they cannot afford. Okay. And that's not to say my time is worth more than theirs, but what it's worth to me is a lot different. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that when you decide to go into business, you can't be the guy, like, here's the thing is my best friend, when he went into this business, he cut off his cable. He wasn't watching sports. He's a sports fanatic. He had to go focus, secular focus on what he was doing because now f six years in the business, he's earned his time back mm -hmm. or awarded when you earn your time back. Mm -hmm. Love it. That, that, brings another story to mind but we won't jump into that because we already an hour and a half into this thing man and yeah. i i, I want to be super respectful of your time and everything Good, man. hey i'll tell you i'll come back and talk with you anytime man i mean you know maybe, maybe we have a part three four and five or something you know what i'm saying i'm with that i'm with that so i want to give you your opportunity to tell people where you could be found there where they can reach out to you at what you got coming down the pipeline and, and all that type of good stuff man so my, my username is very simple. Um, so yeah, you can find it on Facebook there. So um, all evolve, A-L-E-V-O-L-V-E -E is how you can find me on every social media. It's all the same on every one of them. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. So some of the stuff I got going on right now, obviously right now we're in a battle to end financial literacy. 
I'm very big on that, very near dear to my heart because at the end of the day, I feel like decisions that I could have made early in life could have protected my family. If you're an entrepreneur that wants to go into the financial industry, feel free to reach out to me, talk a little bit. You know, I mean, literally I have people leaving industries of being doctors, attorneys coming in this field because they can build something for themselves. Um, so yeah, if you want to reach out, I mean, I'm very simple. You can, there's all of it on the screen. All evolve.com will take you to me. I mean, there's just a lot of ways, but if you want to reach out, if you need financial help, you know, I'm not going to loan you any money, but I'll teach you how to take care of your money. Right? So that's a big part. If you want to learn some financial concepts, let's do it. If you want to basically understand how you can put yourself in a better business, that's what it's all about. So man, that is awesome. Uh, again, I appreciate you for coming out to the school of hard knocks to teach us this, this lesson on, on leadership, man. And you know, this, this is, probably the second longest episode i had so far <laughs> but you know needless to say man you dropped nothing but gems nothing but jewels and you know very very appreciative of your time and again just for you coming out and and just accepting my call you know hopefully you accept more of my calls and i don't embarrass myself too much or screw up too bad they bring you back on <laughs> yeah, you'll be friends forever man i tell you and i don't just tell people that so i'm i'm with that i'm with that so, you know, the, the way I, I always like to end this is by saying, one, everybody who is in this class, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to this episode or just rate, review, and subscribe to this show, to the Genesis Project Podcast, and become a member, become a classmate to get up on all of these lessons at the School of Hard Knocks. Two, You've heard everything. You heard all the gems, all the jewels that was dropped. I hope you guys took great notes and make sure you study these notes so that we can implement them into our own lives so that we ourselves could be successful. And the first, well, rather the final thing that I'd like to say is in everything and through everything that you do, that you chase after, make sure you chase after it with violent, violent action. Class has concluded and I will see you guys in the next one. About 15 years ago, I hated where I was at. And I knew that I was meant for more. Greatness. I wanted to start a business. And I asked my friends and family, how do I start a business? 90% of them never started a business before and the 10 percent that did didn't remember what they did so i went on and earned my bumps and bruises from the school of hard knocks my inspiration for the school of hard knocks and the courses that i've created was to reach people that felt the same way that i felt way back when like i was destined for more the purpose of the Genesis Project podcast was to move those same people towards that group with the guest professor that comes to the show and learn from their mistakes. This is a call to action to those who are searching for greatness. Join the School of Hard Knocks by commenting, sharing, subscribing, and get this message out to those searching for great click on the links in the description to get more information and everything you do everything that you chase after chase after the violent violent action i'll see you in the hallway